And we are live. Good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are. Andrew, back again. Another live stream. It's uh, Tuesday, November 8th, 6.17 p.m. Pacific time here in Las Vegas. Hope everybody's doing well. All right, so good to see everybody. It's been a while. I haven't live streamed in a couple of weeks. Been super busy with the devices, getting the reviews ready. Busy time of year. The channel is growing at a rapid pace, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're shooting for a million views in one month. So let's keep this going, this momentum going. We don't need the music. I hope you can see me and hear me okay. Okay. Somebody's speaking here on this. Uh, <laughs> and anyway, uh, that was weird. Uh, these devices are actually talking. I don't know what was that, what was about. Anyway, bottom line is that the, the channel's growing. We passed 133,000 subscribers in like a week. So we got like a thousand in a week. Uh, the video I did on this one, which is the Dell XPS 13 two in one, uh, actually is doing really well. It got a hundred thousand views in the first like seven days, and now it's up to over 130,000. So really I'm not, to be honest, I'm not really sure where that came from because the surface pro nine video did about 40,000. The surface laptop five did about 30,000. So to get 130,000 plus in the first 10 days, pretty amazing. So it's pretty good reaction. Uh, very interesting device. Uh, not perfect, of course, but an alternative to the Surface Pro 9, which you see here on the right. And as you can see, I have to log in. Hold on. There we go. There's that face recognition. And I like both of these devices. Now, well, the one on the right is the Surface Pro 9 with 5G. It has the SQ3. And the one on the left is the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 here for 2022. And specifically, the model's also called the 9315, like the clamshell counterpart we looked at a couple of months back. But uh, as far as these two are concerned, I'm going to focus on the 5G in this one. I don't have the Intel anymore. I sent that back because I can't afford to keep all this stuff. So the one I'm going to keep is this one. And I think for the reasons being is that I want to see how this uh, SQ3, the Windows and ARM will progress. I want to see how the 5G will perform. So far, it's been performing as expected. And uh, for what I needed to do, it's going to do fine. Now on this one, so this one was sent by Dell, this one I purchased. And the one on the left, the Dell XPS 13, also according to the press material that I saw, does have a 5G option, although I don't know if they're actually selling it yet. I'm gonna, I meant to ask Dell, I didn't yet, but I will. So we'll see if they have uh, something to offer in terms of 5G. But my overall takeaway is that these are pretty interesting two-in-one detachables. Now. Keep in mind, it's not for everyone. You know, some people don't like this form factor. They say this one's not lappable or this one's not lappable as well. Again, you have to define what is lappable and would you want to be using this in your lap like a traditional laptop? That's something you have to ask yourself. And then, of course, these have cameras on the back. Uh, both are very good cameras. I did show in the, uh, in the Surface Pro 9 video that was actually pretty good on this one and then you're going to see this one in the upcoming review which i hopefully will get this week on the xps 13 two and one so it's good to see everybody uh we got 39 of you watching and we have let's see here about only 14 likes what what's going on do me a favor hit that like button let's get this spread out over youtube let's uh let's get the algorithm going let's say hello to paul we haven't seen you in a long time paul good to see you Welcome back. Good to see you. We've missed you. Uh, Galloping Nuns, good to see you again. Love the threads yet again. All right. So you like the way uh, I'm looking with the with the clothes. I don't know about me, but the clothes itself. And then we got David Allen here. Good to see you once again. Dell does throttle quicker with no fan. Absolutely. And I'll talk about what the performance is in a little bit tonight, but I will save some for that review, which I will be debuting this week on the XPS 13 uh, two in one. So interesting the way they go about these. Now, both of these, just so you know, do not have fans. Now the Intel of the Surface Pro 9 does have a fan and it was very quiet. As I showed you, never going about above 35 decibels. So not too bad. 
And let me just put myself on here. And then the one on the left here obviously doesn't. So this is, uh, again, performance is not going to be the priority with these devices. It's going to be hopefully with battery life and you're going to be able to do your everyday tasks without a problem, but it's not meant to be a powerhouse. So I think if you're looking to game on this, if you're looking to do video editing, 4K video editing, I don't think this is the device you want to look at to begin with. And I, don't, I think people sort of misunderstand and get the misconception that these can do everything. And that's not really what these are meant to do. Although the marketing might say otherwise, these are really mobile devices at the end of the day. They're good enough to do Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all those great things. Good to see Joseph Phelan here. Surface, what configuration? This is the Surface Pro 9 running the ARM processor, the SQ3. It has 5G. And on the left is the, and I can show you here, this is the um, <clears throat> Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. And I have the one with, let's see, what do I have here? The Core i5-1230U, I believe, on this one. Let me, uh, let me double check that. Let me go to the system if i can get this working properly I'm hitting the wrong thing so according to this this is the 1230u now and far as the 1230u just so you know the 1230u is a 10 core processor intel 12th gen it has eight efficiency cores and two performance cores good to see alfredo arujo good to see you my friend the sheep is here how are these compared to the ipro ipad pro m1 you know the it, you know probably with the ipad Pro M1 is the fact that the iPad Pro really doesn't utilize the M1 Pro chip to its full potential, right? So they don't really make too many applications, if, if any, that really take advantage of that M1 chip. So it's really hard to say. And I think we're going to see DaVinci Resolve for the iPad later this year or maybe early next year. I know they've been beta testing that and supposedly that's supposed to be amazing and taking advantage of that M1 chip, but so far, I don't think there's really any program or application for the iPad Pro that takes advantage of that powerhouse, the M1, that it's that it has. And that's why I still use, to this day, the 2018 iPad Pro 12.9 inch, because there's really no reason to upgrade. It works fine. I've upgraded to the latest OS, I, I, iPad OS, and it works fine. Try and store, try and uh, resolve on the Pro 9 5G. So that's the other issue we're going to have to talk about. And I did allude to it in the review when I did the Surface Pro 9, both the Intel and the 5G. And I again, I released that already. The compatibility issues on this one are going to be something you need to contend with. Now, for me, it's not a big deal. There were certain benchmarks, as I pointed out in the video, that I couldn't run. PC Mark 10, I couldn't run. I couldn't run all the different tests like the Fire Strike on 3D Mark or the Time Spy, but I did was able to run one of those. I think it was Night Raid, and it performed well. And I wasn't able to really maximize the potential of this simply because of compatibility issues. Now, it's a lot better than it used to be with the SQ2 what we saw last year with the Surface Pro X or the 8C, 8CX Gen 2. Now, this, uh, eight, this is the SQ3 here, and the SQ3 is basically a modified version of the 8CX Gen 3 we took a look at when I took a look at that, um, the ThinkPad, what was it, the ThinkPad X13S Gen 1, which I think I like better overall than this one and i have a few reasons for that now they claim a lot of battery life on this i showed you over 14 hours when you knock it down to 60 hertz in terms of the display on this one when i bumped it up to the 120 it did still a respectable 12 plus hours so you're looking at about two hour difference which is what you can expect between 120 hertz and the 60 hertz so Either way, it's decent, but still not as good as the battery life that I got and I'm getting as I continue to long-term test it, the ThinkPad X, uh, what is it, ThinkPad, I keep, the, the naming is crazy, ThinkPad X13S Gen 1 that has the 8CX Gen 3. And I think, as I mentioned in previous live streams and videos, they should have called that as something else. Now, for those of you wondering, and I know we're bouncing around a little bit, with the Project Nuvia, that Qualcomm is behind, that's not coming till next year, 
apparently, or maybe even early 2024 from what I'm hearing. So that's supposed to compete on the level in terms of performance with the M1 and the M2s that Apple is producing. So right now, that's right, it's the H8, H8, X13S Gen 1. And I've been using that. I'm going to be going to New York very soon. I'll probably bring it with me. It's got the 5G. It's got great battery life. The performance was good on it for what I needed to do as a travel companion. Now, the performance on this is decent. I showed you the numbers, and it'll be fine for everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. But as far as doing any heavy lifting with that, no, you're not going to do it. And it wasn't meant to do that. It wasn't meant to be done on that. So the bottom line is if you have to choose a Surface Pro 9, I wouldn't choose either this or the Surface Pro 9 with the Intel. What would I choose? I would choose the Surface Pro 8. As I mentioned in the review, it, it's not enough of an upgrade here, ladies and gentlemen, especially the Intel year over year. I'm not seeing a compelling reason why anybody should buy the Surface Pro 9. I think they should buy the Surface Pro 8, save the money, that additional money, and put it somewhere else, right? Save the money is always a good thing because you're not going to see that much of a difference. Basically, the same display, same refresh rate, uh, Basically, the battery may be a little bit less, but the bottom line is it's not worth the premium you're going to pay here in 2022. I'll get to your comments and questions in a moment. And then when you look at this one versus the Intel variant and the Surface Pro 9, when you look at the, the one with the 5G here, that's going to be a very limited audience because those who are going to need it are going to want the 5G. That's fine. And you might have to have app capability. You might have app capability compatibility issues, as I mentioned in the review. So that might eliminate that. It just depends on what your use case scenario is. All right, let me go back and get a few questions here while we have everybody here. Uh, we'll talk speakers. iPad is really good. Again, the speakers are pretty good on these. We'll talk more about it. Um, the iPad Pro is not user-friendly with Microsoft Office. That is correct, Joseph. So Private returned his Pro 9 5G, which is this one, solely because Resolve wouldn't install. And that is the issue, people, app compatibility. While they've come a long way, it's a lot better than the second gen of the chip or the SQ2 or the 8CX Gen 2, depending on which unit you get. You know, they've done a much better job this time around. It just depends what apps are you going to do. Now, DaVinci Resolve is a... You know, you're going to edit video, right? So this is not a device to edit video, whether you go Intel or uh, ARM. So I just don't think it's the right tool for the job. There are so much better, so many better options out there to do video editing at that price point. According to Paul, I think the one big plus for these units is the cameras versus the laptop form factor. So the cameras are really good on this, and we're going to get a look at both cameras in a moment. Um, but yes, I agree. And according to Kevin Westmore, does the Surface Pro 9 X have the same or better front camera eye contact, eye tracking enhancement? Uh, has anyone tried it? Okay, so I showed you this. Uh, well, I mentioned, I alluded to it in the video. So what he's talking about is the Windows Studio effects. And this one has it, and the Dell has their own flavor of it, and they both work really well. So, in fact, we can take a look, and I'll get back to your comments and questions. And by the way, any super chat, super sticker will get you the front of the line in terms of priority. It helps support the channel. If you want to become a member, hit that join button. I have three tiers. That also helps out on a monthly basis. I thought I'd throw that out there. Again, this, this stuff gets expensive. Running this channel gets expensive, although I absolutely love doing it. How were the fingerprints on these devices? Uh, the green one didn't have uh, too many fingerprints, even though you would think it would. It was actually pretty good. The platinum, obviously, is the best when it comes to fingerprints. According to William, question, do you have the larger trackpad on the Dell? More com Do you find that it's more comfortable to use, or do you find do not find it to be an issue for you? So what he's talking about is the larger trackpad or touchpad over the Surface touchpad on that signature keyboard cover. And I got to say, I do enjoy using this one. It is a little bit more spacious, although this one's very good. I just like the more... Uh, real estate you get with that one. Now, let's talk about 
the camera. Let me load in the camera here for you. Now, this is connected right now to the uh, Dell XPS 13. Now, this is the rear camera. You can see the mess in the back over there. Let me turn it around. So I have the background blur effect enabled right now. And that's one of the things we were talking about when we talk Windows Studio effects. Well, this is Dell's flavor. And it's all controlled in the Dell Optimizer. Um, it's a little aggressive, as you can see. So what I can do is I can close this and go into, I think it's the Dell app here. Let me see, not the optimizer. I think it's just the Dell app, actually. And I can control, or no, actually it's in the camera, right? Let me go back to the camera. I I'm sorry, there's so many, I'm bouncing around here between the different apps and stuff. Okay, so we're back in the app. Oh, it's here on this side over here, okay. So this is the background blur, right? So I could turn that off. So it's a very, very good camera here. Now we could get, I don't have it auto, I don't have it enabled right now. So that's good. But the, you could do auto framing, eye contact. Uh, you know, we've seen this stuff before. But what's interesting on this one, if you go to the video settings, you can see I have it set for 1440p video. We don't get that on the surface. So this is an excellent camera. What do you think about it? Let me know in the chat. Really nice inbuilt camera effects. I agree, Paul. But what do you think about it, people? Um, here it is. I think it's clear. I think it's got good colors. Uh, I think it's pretty good. All right. So that is what that looks like. Now I'm gonna switch over to the to the Microsoft Surface Pro Nine uh, for a moment. So let me switch these. Somebody's talking here. It's uh, a video going there. Oh, you know what it is? It's the tech chap. Say hello to, he's from England. Okay, so let me move this and can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I switched places here. And let me plug this one in. Something fell, of course. I don't know what it was, but whatever it is, it fell. Okay, so let me load up the camera here. So the camera, also on the back, <laughs> and you see my green screen back there. So I think I have the black brown, blah, 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 the, the background blur effect. So this also has the enhancements, as you can see here. So this is the portrait blur, and then you could do the standard blur. I think the portrait looks better. And here it is without the blur. And then it also has the auto framing. So if I go off camera here, it, it keeps me in frame. It actually works pretty good. And then you have the eye contact. So what the eye contact does, and let's see what the little says, it helps you appear to be looking directly at the camera. So I put the eye contact on, even if I'm looking somewhere else, I don't know what it, I mean, I'm not kind of, I guess it says what it does and, and I guess it does what it says. So bottom line is it looks good. Look, it's 1080p and it's using the neural processing engine. You can see here, video quality, 1080p. There's no 1440p. So that's one difference, a little bit higher res on the Dell. So what do you think? Let me know. Very good camera on the Dell. According to Dean, Kevin Westmore, thank you. No problem, I, I, if you're thanking me. <laughs> uh, can this do some graphics design? You Look, it, again, on the, De on the Dell, yeah. Again, not a powerhouse for performance. Again, that's not the purpose of these devices. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Let's take a look. You can see them here side by side. And you can sort of see it, I know, because of the way the camera's set up. Um, the Dell, well, the Dell's on the right, the Surface Pro 9 with the with the Windows Studio effects on the left. Um, I like the Dell, I'll be honest with you, but this does really look good. They both look good, but I think the Dell looks a little bit better, and that might be due to the fact that it does have the 1440p video. The Surface camera looks better? Okay, Oscar. William says the, the, the Dell looks better. You can't go wrong on either one, and that's the good news out of all this, right? So the good news is, We've got choices here. They're getting better with the cameras. No more potato cams. They've stepped it up, right? That's why I was so angry with the Surface Laptop 5. And it's a lazy, a lazy approach that Microsoft took. They didn't upgrade the camera. No reason why they couldn't put this one 
in, or something similar, at least 1080p, into the laptop five? Do you feel these are lappable? So that's a good question, right? So are these lappable? Not really. So this one, the one over here is going to, this is not, this may be a little bit more lappable because of the way this folio stand works. And you can see it here. It sort of has a little bit of a base, whereas this one has a sharp edges of the surface keyboard. And you can see it behind here. Um, you can see what I'm talking about. So I, I, whether they're lappable or not, not really. These are not meant to be used on the lap, although you could. I know some comments in the um, videos were telling me, oh, no, it's absolutely lappable. People have been using it since the first or second iteration. And I guess if you like it, then God bless you. You know, whatever, you know, everybody's what they well, their threshold is very different. What they're willing to accept is different. I just don't think they're really lappable, but that's just me. How challenging is it to attach the attach the Dell keyboard? K keyboards really on pretty good. So let's take a look at that. I think we can close the camera on this one and this one too. So the way this works, obviously, this is going to work very similar, and you just just take it off like that. So and it connects on like that, and it's got a pretty strong connection. Now, the one thing that you're going to have to know, so the Dell here in the background here, you can see it can go down like that. That's a pretty nice thing that gives you a lot of great viewing angles, whereas this one only gives you three angles. So, so let me take the pen off. Um, so let me show you what I mean. So when you're putting it on, the top, the, the most upright one is this, and then the second position is this, and then the third, thir third position no, sorry. This is the first position. That's the most angled you're going to get. And then the second position is that. And then the third position is that. So really only three angles. Pretty strong magnet. The one thing I wish Dell did was put in a surface kickstand. That, that I would have liked to have had. So when you're looking at the surface right here, this one can go down all the way you see here. This is as far as this can go. Um, actually, this is the one far as it can go that's it so you get a lot more angles on the surface than you do on the dell now why did dell not go with the surface kickstand because i know microsoft did give this to the oems the schematics when they made this design and some didn't use it some did my guess is it might be very expensive to make this because this hin the hinges on this are really intricate and it's an excellent feat of engineering, by the way. Um, really good stuff. And I guess they were saving some money. And that's the other thing between these two is th this one as configured or with the keyboard cover, I should say, and the pen, this is an additional $280 for this particular combination, signature cover with that slim pen too, is going to be more expensive than this one with the keyboard folio and the pen. So you're going to save a couple of hundred dollars. So it just depends on what you're willing to live with in terms of that folio. Now, one of the things, and I'll get to your comments and questions, but one of the things you're going to notice, doesn't that keyboard look very familiar on the Dell? Yeah, because that's pretty much the XPS 13 Plus keyboard we saw earlier this year. So according to David Allen, yep, the kickstand would have made it an instant buy. So... I, my guess is I think it might have been cost. They wanted to come in cheaper, less expensive than the Surface. Uh, that's what I think. Now, my recommendation to Dell, if you're watching, how are you, everybody at Dell? Um, I would go next iteration. I think you're onto something here. Put in a kickstand. Because if you put a kickstand in, this thing would kick some ass. So that's just my opinion. Because I'll tell you what. I love this design. I like the fact that it has the thinner bezels on the on the the bottom. Although this one is a little bit, but you can hide the bottom bezel. Um, but it has a thinner top bezel, as you can see here. So I just like the way this looks. The build quality is phenomenal on it. I think they did a fantastic job on the look and the build. And I love the sky color. It looks really cool. Now, as far as the surface is concerned. Uh, what the advantage is here, again, you have that raised typing angle 
and it's pretty nice. I like having that raised typing angle. That's the other thing I would do if they put a kickstand, make it, make it, make the option for a raised typing angle. Now, Paul saying the higher versatility afforded by the kickstand is awesome, but I think that Andrew is right about the durability requirement. They make it more costly and it is not replaceable. So I, I guess, again, I don't have any knowledge of what went into the decision making of that. But if they would have put in a surface kickstand on this, this thing would have kicked some ass, like I said. I mean, the thing is pretty awesome. Even at, even with this folio, which I was very skeptical, by the way. I was very skeptical coming into this as far as the folio because I like the kickstand. As you know that, I love the surface kickstand. But this one would have been awesome as far as the Dell if they would have went that route. And I think, of course, the next iteration, it's a possibility. So my next meeting with Dell, I'm going to I'm going to lobby for a surface style kickstand on the Dell XPS 13 next year. So let, let's keep the fingers crossed. You never know. But I can tell you the video, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, the video on this that I did 128. Well, I think it's over 130,000 now. Unbelievable reaction. Now, a lot of the comments will say it's a no-go because of the kickstand. That's the theme that I've been getting. But putting that aside, pound for pound, the fact you're getting pretty much the same display minus the high refresh rate of the Surface Pro 9, it, you know, it's going to have its uh, place somewhere. And I tell you what, I'm really liking this keyboard. You know, I wish it did have that raised typing angle, but I'm really enjoying you know, the keys are closer together. And again, we saw that with the XPS 13 plus. And if you watched my video on that, you know, I liked it. So this is pretty much what you're getting here. And it's good to see agent zero nine one. Once again, how are you? If Dell can't include a built-in kickstand, bundle it with an iPad pro like keyboard docking thing. That's not a bad idea, actually. Um, so Here's my thing on this. So this folio, which again, this comes in cheaper. So that's the whole other thing you have to keep in mind. This is more expensive than this. So again, they had to cut corners somewhere to pass the savings onto the consumer. So my guess is that's why they didn't put in that kickstand. Having said that, I'm a really big fan of this keyboard on this. I really like it. Uh, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I was skeptical coming into it, but using it for the past week or so, I'm really liking it. Now, let's talk about the pen for a moment. You can see on here, this one charges and stores magnetically on the top. And it's actually a pretty secure connection. Although if you are traveling, put it in a, a pocket in your bag, just in case you don't want it to be knocked off. Now, of course, the Surface takes a different approach, putting the Slim Pen 2 in this nice little um, place here in the keyboard, it stores a wet, charges there and it's hidden away when it's up in an up, upright angle. So that's a great solution as well. Although if you're not a big fan of the carpenter style pen versus a full size pen, then you might feel like the Dell was a better choice on this. And you can see it here. Um, I actually like the slim pen too a lot. I think it has that haptic engine in it that gives you the paper to pen, the pen to paper feel. This one actually worked out pretty well. It has a little clicking on the top there and it worked really well. Now I like the fact that this stores and charges on the top there. So it's worked out pretty well. Um, according to Brent, good to see you. I would have preferred to see an AMD option, say the Ryzen U. Now that would have been a pretty interesting one on the Dell or even on the Surface. But as you know, uh, Microsoft didn't put out a laptop five with an AMD this year, let alone of obviously a Surface Pro device, which they've never done with AMD. I would like to see that change, of course. And I wasn't happy, like I said in the video, the Laptop 5 should have had an option for an AMD processor, but they didn't do it. Uh, disappointing. That's a very disappointing release this year. More so than I think the Surface Pro 9. That was a little bit better. Now, the other thing you're not going to be happy about on either one of these is there's no headphone jack on either one. So that means you're going to have to use an adapter. Now, the good news is on some level, this is a, this, they give you the adapter with the, with the Dell XPS 13. So at least you don't have to pay extra for that. Whereas obviously with the surface, you have to pay every extra for any type of accessory at this point. 
So no name says, I hope Dell makes the next tablet with active cooling, not a fan of passive cooling. And I'll show you in the video when I release that this week, probably the next day or so, I'm almost done with it. The performance is not gonna be great on this. Now, keep in mind, it's relative to something like this. So for that, it's fine. And again, everyday performance is gonna be fine. And if you're looking at the 5G Surface Pro 9, you don't have any of those compatibility issues on that Surface Pro 9 that we saw with the Dell. So the Dell does eliminate that. It is an Intel processor. And the one they're using here, and the one that they sent over, let me just double check that. Uh, this one is using, oh, wrong thing. Let me go here. So this one is using the Core i5-1230U. Same one as we saw in the, um, I have another laptop coming with that same processor. So we'll talk about that very soon. Um, so the overall takeaway is, if you have to choose, it just depends. Do you want to save some money? Now, again, like I said, I like the Surface Pro 8. If you're looking at the Surface Pro 9 and you don't need the 5G and you want to save some money and you don't care about the multi-core increase that you saw in the Intel version with the 12th gen over the 11th gen, I didn't see a compelling reason to upgrade to the Surface Pro 9. I think the Surface Pro 8. Now, the key thing here is the Surface Pro 8 is on sale for Best Buy at Best Buy. I think I have a link in the description below. If you go with the entry level model, that's $799, right? $799 doesn't get you, though, keep in mind the keyboard cover, the signature cover, or the Slim Pen 2. So that will add another $280 on that. So it's still cheaper than going with the Surface Pro 9. And the other thing I'm not crazy about is the pricing on the 5G model. So they came in very expensive. That was the other disappointing thing, and I talked about it a little bit in the video. This is $12.99. And $12.99, like I said, doesn't get you the signature keyboard cover or the pen. So that means you're going to add onto that another $280 plus tax. So $1,300 plus another, say, $300, right? So that's, uh, what is that, $1,600, $1,580, or whatever it is. Uh, that's a very expensive proposition for that type of device. So unless you really need a 5G connection, you don't want to use a hotspot with your phone, then you're going to be paying a premium. Not crazy with that pricing on this 5G unit. I think the performance, as I showed you, is not going to be as good as the Surface Pro 8 even, let alone the Surface Pro 9 from this year with the Intel. This one is just not going to cut it price to performance ratio is going to be high. So I would much rather invest that money in something else if you're going to be going with that, uh, thinking about getting that ARM processor. Now, William, with the question, is the keyboard for the Surface Pro 8 compatible with the Surface Pro 9? Thank you for bringing that up. That is uh, correct, William, it is. And if you have a Surface Pro 8, if you have a Surface Pro X, you don't need to buy the keyboard. These keyboards on this one is the same one you'd get from last year. So that compatibility is good. So you don't have to spend extra. So if you do want to upgrade for some reason, I mean, if you have that prerogative, you want the latest and greatest, fine. You don't need, if you already have the Surface Pro 8 and you have the pen and you have the keyboard, you don't need to buy it. Uh, you don't need to buy it again. That's the good news. Anything before the Surface Pro 8, then you're going to have to get a whole new keyboard and pen because it's not compatible. So that, thank you for bringing that up, William. What money, what memory and SSD size do you recommend for the Surface Pro? So I showed you in the video, it's 2230. It's an M.2 2230 PCIe SSD drive. And when you open it up, and again, this one, unlike the Intel, which had a little indentation, just pop it out. I opened it up. Just use a SIM ejection tool. Couple of things. When you get to the SSD, again, 2230 is the size, M.2 PCIe. And we didn't get the greatest reads and writes. Now, I have the entry-level model that only has a paltry 128. I would not recommend anybody getting any device with 128 in 2022 going into 2023, just so you know. And I showed in the video, it's not the easiest to upgrade this in terms of finding those 2230s, although I did find on Newegg, I found some on eBay, and I found a couple, I think, on Amazon, but I'm not sure if they were compatible. I'm double-checking on that. And they're, they're not the cheapest things in the world. So, again, so they do that on purpose. They want you to go to the higher-end units. And then 
if you open this up, you'll also see the SIM slot for your 5G, because again, this has 5G, and it also supports eSIM, as um, su supposedly this will, will as well. I don't know if they're making a model yet. I know it was in the works. So hopefully, Tim, that answers your question. Um, and then Vasu's asking, unless you have covered it already, could you please share your thoughts about battery life on these devices? So I touched upon it earlier in the stream and we have a view, 73 of you, but only 48 likes. So do me a favor, hit that like button. And if you have a question, put a cue before it like William did, that'll help me identify it a little bit easier. Thanks. All right. What, uh, so the question becomes, uh, battery life. So the battery life on the, 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 we'll, we'll talk about this for a moment as we alluded to earlier. So on the Surface Pro 9 with 5G, this is gonna have the best battery life. And that was one of the things they were touting with this is stellar battery life. So I got over 14 hours on the continuous web surfing test that I do. That will translate into about 10 to 12 hours, depending on what you're doing. And that was 60 Hertz enabled. It went down to 12 hours and change when I, I think it was 12 hours and 10 minutes, when I went down to, uh, when I bumped it up to the 120 Hertz, which is the higher refresh rate, which will use more power, take up more battery life. So that was about, again, a little, I think it was like 12 hours and 10 minutes. So that's about, I would say eight to nine hours on 120 Hertz, which are really decent for this type of device. I think it was 47 point seven watt hour battery. I think, and I, just don't quote me on that. It's in the video. This one, you're looking at about 10 hours uh, when I had the same test. So you're looking at maybe eight hours, depending on what you're doing. Now, the other thing you have to remember on this one, and both of these actually, there's no fan, so it's silent. You're not gonna contend, and that's another selling point on these type of devices. You're not gonna contend with any fan noise So on any one of these. So unlike the Intel version of the Surface Pro 9, you will have, um, you will have fan noise and then some people hate it and they're trying to get work done. They're not going to like it. So just something to keep in mind. All right. So according to Paul, I like the ability to raise the keyboard angle with the surface pro looks like three or so degrees. Nice little ergonomic touch. I agree. Let me go back a little bit. Um, so this was what we just talked about. No name with the active cooling. There is no active cooling on these. These are passively cooled. So it does warm up a little bit, but on the on the surface, not too bad. This one gets a little bit warmer. I'll talk about it in the upcoming review on that. And I have that queued up this week. So stay tuned. Uh, question from David. Can you remind me what ports are on the Dell? Okay, so the Dell has, let me see if I can show you here. So on the side here, and I can unplug it for a moment. Um, so here you have two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, okay? And then that's it, nothing on this side. So just the two ports, not a great selection. The good news is they are Thunderbolt 4, but they're both on the same side. I would like to have one on each side. That would have made it a little bit easier, but no. And again, if you're gonna charge, one of them is gonna be taking up one of the ports. Just keep that in mind. On the surface, of course, if you look here, this is the Surface Connect port. And then on the other side, you can see one being taken up here are two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. So again, a lot of the same functionality as the Dell. The Surface Connect port, I just think is a waste of time nowadays in 2022. I don't know why they're still using it. Um, it charges just as fast with the USB-C. I didn't see any big difference. So I think there, that's just one thing to keep in mind. Although you can use it with the surface dock, I guess, but I, I would rather have another port put back the headphone jack. Again, I'm not crazy about that decision, right? The other difference is they move the power button. Uh, both of these have power buttons on the top and the volume keys on the top. Uh, this is the volume rocker up and down and the power button. So this one has a fingerprint scanner. This one doesn't. This power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. So that's been pretty good. Yes, they are dockable. And the fact that they have Thunderbolt ports. Oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. The Intel version has Thunderbolt 4. I don't know why I said that because I'm trying to do a million things. These are USB-C type C ports. So um, these are 3.2 Gen 2. So these are not gonna be Thunderbolt ports. 
if you go, that's the way, see, this is one of the things I pointed out in the video. This is one of the things I pointed out in the video. Uh, it's going to cause confusion among an av among the average consumers. Why they did away with the Surface Pro X and folded it into the Surface Pro line proper, I think it's a mistake. I think people are going to get confused. Well, I want 5G, but I can't get it with the Intel. But if I get it with the Intel, I don't get uh, any of these other, the 5G. And then if I go with the 5G, I don't get the Thunderbolt ports. It's just too confusing. So, and the compa app compatibility issues is something they downplay. But that's going to be a huge problem for an average consumer who just wants to take it home and be able to use the, the applications that they are used to using on Windows. So it's going to be uh, causing a little bit of confusion. And that's uh, I'm not crazy about. And the other thing, by moving to one body, one uniform design, is the fact that now, they're now putting the thicker this in a thicker design. Remember, the Surface Pro X was thinner than this. Um, in fact, this doesn't have a fan in it, and, and there's a lot of unused space here as a result. So I think they made a, a, a strategical error here. They could have gone with a Surface Pro X moniker on this one, which is what I would have done. It would have kept it separate, and it would have allowed them the freedom to make a thinner device like they had with the Surface Pro X. So uh, I just think it's just going to cause confusion among the average consumer. Uh, David says, I kind of like that they did the seven plus for business. You can get LTE, but only for business. Correct. So that was one of the ways you can get it with Intel and then with the LTE. But again, as far as 5g, which is not great anyway, by the way, even here in the United States, at least, um, this is the first surface device at 5g, right? So you couldn't get it before. That was the other thing that they were touting. But again, at 1299, I think it's asking a lot here. Uh, Dell's back camera looks pretty protruding. It looks like it protrudes too much. Do we have more uh, more careful in day to use as it avoid accidents? So I talked about this in the video that I did on it. So what he's talking about is this. So you can see how much it protrudes out there. In fact, um, let me see if I can show you here. You can see it here. I mean, it does protrude out. In fact, when you're using it as a tablet, um, and let me show you here. So if I'm using this as a tablet, right? So I'm left-handed. And when I hold it, I'm touching the, the camera. So I'm getting fingerprints on it. I'm not crazy about the placement of this, okay? I'm not crazy about the placement. So, um... Now, having said that, they put a pretty nice camera in there, and I'll show you an example in the video. I have it ready to go. Uh, the 4K looks great. But then again, are you going to be taking photos or videos on a tablet? Now, I do mention that there is a use case scenario for it. For a surveyor, for instance, they use it for their job. They can use this to survey and do stuff like that and use the pen. Now, if I'm right-handed, if I were right-handed, it's not much of an issue. So again, I'm only 10% of the population, right? Isn't that what left-handed people are? Um, if I'm right-handed, it's not an issue because you can always, uh, or I can use it upside down like this. But again, you know, yeah, I guess I could use it like this. So it's not much of an issue. But again, I keep touching it. So for me, it's a little bit of an issue. Um, that's a little nitpick, not a, not a deal breaker by any stretch. Strange that the arm powered MacBooks have Thunderbolt support, but surface pro nine, five G doesn't have Thunderbolt for whatever reason. I think it has to do with Qualcomm, um, because they're using a Qualcomm chip. I don't know if they're paying the licensing fee to Intel. They don't have the greatest of relationships. So, uh, I would imagine again, Intel owns the intellectual property and they, they can license it. Um, uh, maybe Apple does and they just don't i mean i don't think there's any reason why it couldn't if uh but again i don't know if the architecture of the sq3 maybe there's something in it doesn't have the support i know nuvia is supposed to be on the level of the surface pro i'm, I'm sorry of the m1 m series of chips the m1 the m2 blah 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 uh, we'll see. But again, we're not going to see that for till 2024, it looks like. So uh, for those counting on that to make a challenge to Apple, I don't think you're going to you're going to have a little bit of a wait. All right, we got about 65 of you, but we only have, let's see, 57 likes. I don't understand this. Maybe you guys maybe you guys don't like me. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm kidding. All right. So I'm still rocking, according to Icarus, I'm still rocking the Surface Pro 5. Works like a charm. Um, do you M2, do you M2 iPad makes more sense? Do you think M2 iPad Pro? No. I mean, look, what are you planning on doing with your iPad Pro? Because there's really not much that can take advantage of it. Um, as far as video editing, yeah, you got Luma Fusion, but not much after that. Photoshop, maybe Photoshop Elements, I think, or again, not full fledged desktop class uh, performance uh, in terms of a of a, an app. So, do I think it may be future proof? Yeah, but they're not making Final Cut Pro for the iPad. They're not making now. The only thing that I'm really hoping that will make a big difference is going to be that DaVinci Resolve. That's not out yet. So interesting. Interesting, right? Let me know what you think. Um, do they both have Windows Hello camera? Yes, the Dell has Windows Hello camera. It's an IR camera. So does obviously the, the Surface Pro 9. Both the Intel and the ARM variant. Question, I'm a student, Maximus is a student, mostly does note-taking, researching, web browsing, watching movies. Which one do you think is more suitable? Should I go for the Surface Pro 9 Intel or the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1? So the Surface Pro 9 Intel will give you better performance. It will have a better kickstand, meaning it will have a kickstand, so you have a more angles. And it has a higher refresh rate, right? Dynamic refresh rate up to 120. If you're willing to pay the premium for that, which is going to be a couple hundred dollars at least more than a similarly equipped Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, then go for it. But if you want to save some money, then go with the Dell. It's a really great display. Also the same resolution, 2880 by 1920, 3 to 2 aspect ratio. That one will run you a couple hundred dollars less, right? Or maybe even more, depending on which SKU you go to. So... It's just a matter of what you're willing to pay. Now, if you really want to save some money and you're thinking of the Surface Pro 9, do what I recommended in the video. Get a Surface Pro 8. You get the same dynamic refresh rate that you would on the Surface Pro 9. You get the same display, 2880 by 1920, 3 to 2 aspect ratio. And it starts, and I wouldn't get the starting one, but just to give you an idea, it starts at $799 over at Best Buy. See the link in the description below. Add the keyboard cover, add the pen, since you're a note taker. Um, you got a nice little system there, and you saved a couple of hundred dollars over going with the Surface Pro 9. And that's always a good thing, right? Especially in this economy. Uh, Go i3 5G is not bad. Go i3 5G is not bad paired with a better notebook. I'm not sure what you, what do you mean i3? I don't, there is no more i3. I don't think they make one. It, um, Orson Messiah, it'd be great if they used AMD Ryzen. Yeah, but they're not, we don't get it on this. Dell didn't go with it either. Surface Go. So the Surface Go is a good point. Surface Go is a, really want to save money, like half, uh, maybe more. Surface Go 3, 256, 5G. How much is that one? Somebody can get a price on that. Now, the problem is with that, you're not going to get as great a display, but that may not be an issue for some people. You get the kickstand, the Surface kickstand, right? That might be a way to go. That might be the way to go. And he has it. He has it. All right. And work for Apple. <laughs> KL <laughs> K-L-H-L-L, -L, whatever, uh, that works for Apple, and he has a Surface Go with 5G. All right. Okay. Interesting. And they have the i3. Okay, that's what you're talking about. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. And that has the i3. Surface Go 3. Um, it's actually a great display. Yeah, it, I'm right. And you're going to save a lot of money with that one. The Surface Go 2 i3 with 8 gigabytes of RAM is a great uh, companion to my XPS 9500, XPS 15 9500. And an M2 iPad. Okay. Two cores, four threads. Dual core. Yeah, well, look. <laughs> it gets the job done, right? And it has a nice display, and you get everything you need on it. That would be pretty good, actually. So we got our first Super Chat here. If it shows up on my thing here. There it is. All right, we got our first Super Chat. 
Round of applause for Snub. $5. Is Dolby Vision on a laptop worth it? There seems to be not much content besides Netflix. It's nice if it comes with it. I'm not, I don't turn it on a lot of the times. I don't like the way it looks personally, just that's because of me. But I do show you in my videos when it's turned on. I think it skews the colors a little bit and it's supposed to give you the really deep blacks. It just depends on the panel, of course. Not a huge deal for me, but if it has it, it's fine. If it doesn't have it, I'm not crying over it. That's just me though. Some people swear by it. And I think Windows doesn't do the greatest job when it comes to HDR to begin with. That's another issue. We'll talk about that in a separate time. Question from Vasu. Does, by the way, thank you for that super, that $5 uh, super chat from uh, Snub once again. Thank you very much. Does the Surface Pro 8 with 11th Gen i7, 16 gigs, offer the same or better performance as the Surface Pro 9, 12th Gen i5? It's going to be, I'll tell you what, if you could save a lot of money on that one and go with that Surface Pro 8 with the 11th Gen i7, it'll be on par it won't be that much less than the i5 12th gen. Although I think the i5 12th gen will have a little bit better multi-core. That's one of the themes we're seeing because you're going from, what was that? A quad core to this one, which had 10 cores, right? But again, those are the efficiency cores, 10 efficiency, and then two performance on the, on the 12th gen. A uh, question from agent zero nine one, which one of the two devices has more key travel? So, Believe it or not, I like the key travel. This is good, but I like it on this one. So one of the things when I looked at the XPS 13 Plus is why I was a little concerned was the the way these keys looked right out of the box, like right off the bat. I thought, wow, they're so close together. I'm not going to like typing on it. That was the exact opposite that what happened. I actually really liked it. This feels a little bit more satisfying than this one, although they've really done a good job on this one. I like this one a little bit better. Interesting. I didn't expect that, by the way. How is the battery life? I talked about it a little bit. Look at my review. So when it comes to battery life, uh, I'm not going to rehash it. I already said a couple of times here, but go to my review I released on the Surface Pro 9. I did both the Intel and the ARM in the same video, comparing all that. The Dell uh, it got about 10 hours on my continuous web surfing test. So you're looking at about seven to eight hours, depending on what you're doing. Uh, again, everybody's use case is a little bit different. There's no fan in these with the non-Intel of any of these, although uh, the surface, uh, with the Intel does. Okay. So when I said earlier about the ports, no Thunderbolt on this one, right? The 5g does not have Thunderbolt. Um, so that's just one thing you need to keep in mind. This does, this has two Thunderbolt four ports and that's it. There's no other ports on it. Now the, the thing they give you is the adapter for the headphone jack and Dell also gives you a USB A to USB C. So that's covered as well. That's taken into consideration here with all these extra costs that are going into this. I sound like New Yorker, New Yorker cost, cost. <laughs> I, I must sound like I'm, I'm like in the Tony Sopranos crew, right? You must think that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um, getting back to this, one of the value propositions is that the Dell at least gives you those adapters and you don't have to pay extra for it, right? So uh, whereas in the Microsoft, in the Surface, you got to pay for anything extra beyond the tablet, right? So there's a bundle that you can get with the keyboard and the pen on this one. Uh, I showed you in the in the initial video as well. Um, this one only comes with the tablet. You got to buy this separate. You got to buy the pen separate, which is this. Uh, so you know, just keep that in mind. It all adds up. And again, Surface Pro 8 on sale is looking more and more attractive. Alfredo is asking, I know maybe this is a little off topic, but would you say it's a good value laptop this year from all that you have reviewed as we came come close to the end of the year? I'm going to have a special end of the year wrap up of the best of 2022. I'm working on that. So stay tuned. I'm going to talk about that. I know people want to know. I'm going to be doing a video on it. I want to spoil it. That's coming. So stay tuned. Uh, another super chat, this time from Vasu, my friend, and he gives us two Canadian dollars. Thank you. Um, thank you for your insights on these devices. No, thank you for the support. Um, 
we're going to be coming to an end with these devices. And I got a lot of new stuff that just came in. I have the Dell Latitude 9330 2-in-1. That video is ready to go. I think I'm going to get that out tomorrow. That's a 2-in-1 business-focused convertible. It's really good. Uh, it's got a nice 2K display, QHD+, 2560 by 1600. Uh, nice form factor. I think it's like 2.8 pounds. Uh, pretty, pretty portable. So really nice stuff. ThinkPad X1 Yoga 7th Gen. Um, that's an oldie. Oh, so the 7th Gen I reviewed earlier this year. Uh, I was a little disappointed on that one. I think the that was the one where I was expecting a little bit more. I liked the, the X1 Carbon Gen 10 a little bit better. We'll talk more about that soon. Um, I hope that the Surface Laptop Studio is going to be on sale for Black Friday. So we'll see, hopefully. And there was no refresh this year, right, for the Surface Laptop Studio. Now, my guess is we're going to see that next year, the refresh on that one. That at 11th gen, right? That would be nice to be upgraded. To, if they skip the 12th and just go right to the 13th, maybe the springtime. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, Nicholas is asking, how does the Surface Pro 9 compare with the iPad Pro M2 with the stylus? I think there's a video here that we may have to do, right? I mean, I need to get the M iPad M Pro M2. Look, it depends. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, then, you know, you might as well just get the iPad. But like I said, the M2 is a nice, powerful chip that's not being utilized to its fullest potential on the iPad Pro. Apple's just not utilizing it. So I'm not really sure if it's like, you know, it's like almost like comparing apples to oranges in a sense, whereas the Surface Pro 9 can run all the application, desktop applications, especially the Intel one, can run all your desktop applications like micro, you know, Office, full desktop versions without any compromises and other programs as well. iPads, iPads better stylus wise. So they have the Apple Pencil. It's just a matter of what you like. Uh, I find that the Slim Pen 2 is actually pretty good. And you can see it here. Uh, it's a carpenter style pen. You can get a good look at it here. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, and it's got a haptic engine. So when you are writing on it, it gives you a little feedback, haptic feedback, it gives you a more like pen to paper feel. I, I kind of like it. The pen on this one's really good as well. I believe they used a different, this uses the Microsoft. Um, this is the pen. Pro. I don't know. Does this one work on this? I don't remember. I, no, this is the Wacom, right? I think this is the Wacom AES technology. This is the Microsoft pen protocol uh, from Microsoft. It's the, I think it's the 2.0. Uh, does it get warm when you use it while charging? This one gets a little bit warm. And even when you connect these to the chargers, they both get a little bit warm. Not too crazy. Nothing over the top. Uh, when you connect it to a display, which I'm doing right now, Right now, it's actually staying pretty cool, and it's connected to HDMI out, so not too bad. Um, you know, look, there's passive cooling here, so you're going to get a little bit of heat. Nothing, nothing crazy. They're not gonna they they temper the performance to keep it cool. Again, there's no fans in this, so you're gonna have to keep that in mind. What these type of devices are. Uh, Maximus is asking, is there a way to keep the pen safe uh, without the keyboard in the Surface Pro 8 or the Surface Pro 9? Does it attach to the device by itself? Uh, no. So you really need this keyboard cover in order to, a couple things, charge it, although they do sell a separate charger, which is way overpriced. Uh, I think it's like, like 50 bucks for a charger or something like that, or $39 for a little thing that you can charge it without this, or you can get the bundle. This is $280 as a bundle. What it does is it connects to the Surface Pro 9 and it charges and stores it in the keyboard cover. There's no way to store it on the device itself like years past. That's done. They, they went away from that design. You tend to hit the taskbar a lot in Windows, even in full screen on OneNote, et cetera. Yeah, it happens. Um, Ethan is uh, saying, I wonder if it is a, I wonder, I wonder, is it the Intel processors that are terrible or is it the laptop manufacturers that make them thinner and thinner and less capable of dissipating heat? Well, that's a good question, right? So there's so many factors that go into why a laptop is not going to perform up to potential or why does it overheat? You know, look, you're trying to jam a powerful processor into a very thin and light chassis. So that's going to always be the engineering 
uh, question for the engineers, how do we make it perform reasonably under those conditions? Because the heat has to go somewhere. In this case, they decided to do it with no fan and they want to use passive cooling. So there's going to be a compromise somewhere and the performance is not going to be as good. So with the Intel processors and the Intel version of this, they are putting fan, there is a fan in there and the performance is obviously better for obvious reasons, because it's being actively cooled there. And you saw the numbers. I think I got over 8,000 on the multi-core test on the Geekbench 5, as opposed to like 5,000, right? So you're seeing the difference there. You're seeing the difference there. Uh, on, on the Dell, I think I got like 5,500, which is like last year's performance, even on a 12th gen, because it doesn't have a fan. And we'll talk, I'll talk more about that in the upcoming video. We got 74 of you watching right now. Let me just check the channel right now to see everything is looking okay again i got over 130,000 views on my dell xps 13 uh video so if you didn't see it i'll drop a link when we're done or just go over to my channel uh it's doing really well and i was surprised as hell to see such a reaction to that video I mean, I got 40,000 on my Surface Pro 9 unboxing video. I got 30,000 on my Laptop 5 video. And then I got 130,000 on the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 video, which just blew my mind. So it's just a matter of, uh, it, it seems like there's a lot of interest in this. Uh, and I think that the, the, the category is ripe for Dell or some of these other OEMs to come in and take over from Microsoft, which I guess is what Microsoft ultimately wants to do because they always say, well, we're not trying to compete with our OEMs. We're just trying to give them a framework to make it better, make the Windows devices better. And maybe that's what the whole thing is. But again, what they put out with the Laptop 5 was a lazy upgrade. It was the easy way out. And it's not really an upgrade. I called it the Laptop 4A. And that's really disappointing. So Future V is saying on paper, the Surface Pro 9 looks like it's a better purchase because of the active cooling. With the Intel one, can, again, this is my point. You, the, the consumer is, go, the average consumer is not a techie like us, right? They're going to go to the store. They're going to go to Best Buy. They're going to say, I want the new Surface Pro 9. And they say, oh, I'd like to have the 5G. That's where the problems will start. And you, I believe you, me, the Best Buy return line is going to be full because people are going to return this and say, I can't run this program. I can't run that program. I can't connect to a Thunderbolt dock, although probably the average consumer would even know what Thunderbolt is. Um, but I can't connect to multiple monitors. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you probably could on that. But the bottom line is they're just going to be confused. And why do they have to pay $12.99 for less performance, right? Just to get the 5G? I think the pricing is just not right on this. It's just not right. Agent 091, Microsoft needs to do what Google's doing with the Pixel and straight up compete before Apple takes up more of the pie. Relying on the third parties is a mistake. And we've seen Microsoft make numerous mistakes strategically over the years. They were late on the phones, right? So they had the Windows phone, by the way, was a nice ahead of its time in a lot of ways, but they failed because Google beat them. Obviously, Apple beat them. They were too late. So they didn't want to repeat the same problem. So we, but but the problem is now they did it half-assed this year. They didn't go full throttle. They have an, a ripe opportunity here to take this to the next level, to compete on the next level, uh, and to really stand out and show the OEMs what's possible, right? Uh, putting a 720p webcam in your laptop, that's not the way to go. ARM isn't ready? No. And if you're waiting for Project Nuvia... That's not going to be here till at the earliest in 2024, the way it's looking. So to me, that's just uh, not good. Not good at all. Does the Surface Pro 9 lag when editing photos? Well, which one are we talking about? See, this is the confusion. Are we talking 5G or the Intel? Intel's fine. Intel is fine. We saw great multi-core performance year over year. I showed you in the video, it's like double. And then, which is what we're seeing from the 11th gen to the 12th gen. And then, of course, single core is improved. But if you're going to talk about this one, this one's not going to have as much performance. In fact, it's less performance than the 11th gen from Intel last year on that Surface Pro 8. So, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This is going to cause confusion among the average consumers when they're looking at this because they don't know what they're buying. 
because there's a big difference between the Surface Pro 9 with 5G and the Surface Pro 9 with an Intel processor. They're, they're not going to know the difference. They're going to want the 5G and not realize what that means. It means less performance, less app compatibility, and more headaches. And a, a bigger price tag, by the way. And only one color, which is not a big deal. But just so you know, you can't get that beautiful forest green in the one with the Surface Pro 9 with 5G. I appreciate that, Maximus. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Uh, you know, look, people, this is not easy, but we're having some great growth on the channel. Uh, like I said earlier in the live stream, and we've done this over an hour already, you know, we did over, um, I just passed, uh, we're going to be 134,000 subscribers within the week or so. So if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Let's get this. I want to get to 150,000. So let's keep building and keep going. Next goal is 150,000. So let's get that going. Um, we passed over 30 million last month. We're going to hit 31 million. I think we're going to hit our first month with 1 million views. Believe it or not, in the six years that I've been doing this, I've never gotten 1 million views on a video and I've never gotten 1 million views in total in one month, but I have 30, almost 31 million views in total. So we've been very consistent, but now we've seemed to turn the corner. I think we're going to the next level here because unprecedented growth. So in both subscribers and in views. So I want to thank everybody for that. Um, according to KLH. Two, uh, I'd like to see it in AMD. It's better option. It's missing many of the manufacturers right now. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, to be honest with you. It would be nice to have it, right? Would be nice with 86 of you watching right now. And only 75 likes. I want to get to 100, man. Come on. Let's do it. And for those wondering, again, that Surface Pro 9 video... No, I'm actually, that's 40,000 views. The, the Dell XPS 13 2 and one we're approaching 131,000 views. Wow. I mean, I can't believe it. In, in, in 10 days or so. That's pretty amazing. All right, let me go back a little bit. I don't want to miss any of your questions. Again, put a question before your qu comment or question, obviously, so I can see it. Drawing and notes are better due to the nature of Windows 11. I don't know. The iPad does a pretty good job of that too. The pen, they, they have a pretty good deal over there. I hope I didn't miss any. Why are Orson's asking, why are manufacturers still using terrible CPUs from Intel? I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. It, they, they throw cores at the problem, right? More cores means more heat. You go back a little bit. If you detach, I already talked about this. Nicholas, if you detach the keyboard on the Surface Pro 9, does a slim pen 2 magnetically stick to the side? No, we looked at, doesn't do that. That was a previous, prior to the Surface Pro 8, I believe you can stick it on the side. Going back a little bit. All right, I think we got them there. All right, man. Thank you, Maximus, for coming by. Love from India. Yes. Th and th hello to my people in India. How are you? So Windows 10 had the tablet mode, but doesn't support uh, performance or e-course, right? So that was another thing. Windows 8. Remember Windows 8? That was a disaster. Windows 10 was a much better. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star, I think Star Trek. Although I like Star Wars. Keith Benjamin with, with the <laughs> hard-pressing questions on. And everybody should go out and vote if you haven't done so already. <laughs> put in the comments a question. Put in the comment section in the chat whether you're a Star Trek or Star Wars fan. I'm just curious. Just put it in the chat. All right. According to David Cow, Intel, unfortunately, Intel uh, CPU and Windows are trash. Windows body with Mac OS would be perfect. That would be interesting. It's a little late to vote. 
<laughs> I get, is it always a closed? I don't, I don't know. You're right. It is <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> just as long as we get the sitting president out um, in two years from now. Uh, that doesn't really tell you where I stand. I'm independent, by the way. Semper Fi. <laughs> okay. Disney killed Star Wars and Trek is a zombie now. Yeah, it's pretty bad on both fronts. No question. And behind me, you can see that book I'm reading, Surrender. Uh, it's not. I'm not being sponsored by U2, which is my favorite band growing up, and I've seen them like over 50 times in concert um, around the world, actually. Uh, let me get that for you. Let me show you. So... This is the new book from Bono, who's the lead singer of uh, U2, and really great book. I've been reading it. I actually have the ebook as well. It's I'm listening it in the car. Um, very good. He narrates it as well. So if you're a U2 fan, this is a great book. Uh, it's called Surrender. Let me see what it's called. Surrender, 40 songs, one story. And I'm not being sponsored, although they should sponsor me. Let me see if I can get a better, you can get a better look at it. There it is. Um, really good. One county in Pennsylvania closes at uh, 2,300 hours. Okay. Yeah, but they're going to rig the election, so it doesn't matter. So it's all rigged. Here it is. This is the camera I was looking for. Read the Bono book instead. Don't forget about politics. Read the Bono book. Although he's not, they're not paying me. Bono, if you're watching, big fan, big fan. All right. I think we're coming to the, <laughs> we're coming to the end here. Uh, very good stuff, people. I'm glad you were able to come by. Uh, if I missed your comment or question, I'm sorry, but one person, and I, I love doing this stuff, right? Let me know. I know I, I haven't been as consistent on the live streams. This is a busy time of year, and I'm trying to get my best of 2022 ready. Got Black Friday deals coming up, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel because you don't want to miss anything. Uh, great deals coming up, and again, my overall takeaway is if you're looking at the Surface Pro 9, either the Intel or the 5G, maybe look at the Surface Pro 8 on sale. And again, link in the description below. Not because I'm going to make money on it with the affiliate. Maybe I'll get a little commission. That's not nothing to do with anything. What I'm talking about is just saving yourself some money and getting pretty much similar on par performance. Not as great, but you're going to save yourself some money and having the extra money is better. Okay, let's hit the music, people. Thank you, William. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we need a bourbon show. Yes, that's coming, Keith. We're going to do a drinking show. We're going to do a drinking show. Uh, we're going to wait for the weekend, okay? Let me see what we can do this weekend, maybe. Well, let me see what my schedule looks like. Although this weekend, may, maybe not. Uh, it's my mother's uh, 80th birthday, so we're going to be celebrating it. So for, for the Mama Mama David's uh, 80th birthday um, is coming up, so everybody wish her a happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video, people. Uh, great to see you, and uh, everybody have a great rest of your week, and see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.